one of the best gaming features we have in this LG OLED is black frame insertion, OLED Motion Pro. And that's how I play most of the games, 99% of the time, because in my opinion, motion clarity is so important for gaming because we are moving the camera all the time. So it doesn't matter that you have a 4K picture if when you're moving the camera, it's a blurry mess, okay? The picture quality goes down the toilet. So I want to keep that clarity when I am moving the camera. And I love to play with a controller. Some people play with a mouse and they do this. <laughs> you're not going to see motion clarity at all because you're just going too fast, okay? And I truly believe that that is something that we do subconsciously to prevent, to avoid that blur. So people subconsciously, they are going to do this because they don't want to see that transition. They do not want to see a panning shot at all because it looks terrible if you don't have enough motion clarity. But if you start playing on a CRT or you play with all the motion pro high at 120 on this LG C1, you're going to start enjoying that motion clarity because you're going to be able to see better. So when you see better, then you're going to look for it and you're going to enjoy that a lot. But you know what the problem is? Bro, it looks too dark. I don't like it. Well, I have shared with you settings to use it on HDR and on SDR and they both look fantastic. If you try the settings I've shared with you before, but which option is better? What is the absolute best way to enjoy this setting so far this is my understanding so far this is the best of my abilities right now and this is something that i continuously try to improve because this is how i play the games so i'm going to tell you after thousands of hours of exploring this how can I get a better option? And I question myself the settings every day. Is this the best way? <laughs> so after all that experience, I can tell you without a doubt that SDR, using module HDR on, on the service menu with reshade, just to fix that near black is the best way because by using module HDR on the service menu, you get that full screen brightness. So take a look at the near black test pattern. Before, after, before, after. So basically what I am doing is I am fixing that near black visibility with reshape. But now the problem is that you have to access the service menu, void your warranty and do this at your own risk and all of that. And I get it. It's not for everyone, okay? But I truly believe that this is not as risky as you might think. And the reason is black frame insertion, it is going to be less likely to burn in. And the explanation is very simple. The pixels are turning on and off. <laughs> it's that simple. So with all motion pro high on this LG C1, for example, the, the TV is drawing the picture left to right, top to bottom. 38% of the picture and then it scrolls that down and the rest is black. Scrolls that down and the rest is black. Also, I believe that because of that, the more aggressive that black from insertion uh, setting is, the more brightness the TV should be able to push because most of the screen is going to be black. So there is more power available. So that this, this uh, company, you know, LG, should be allowing for more brightness when you use the feature because most of the screen is black and the pixels are turning on and off so it is going to be less likely to have image retention and burning and i didn't research anything to tell you this i am 100 percent convinced that's the case <laughs> okay so giving i am 100 percent convinced of this given the same power you know, settings, let's say same brightness settings with black from insertion and without black from insertion, with black from insertion is going to be less likely to burning. I guarantee you that. And not that I am concerned about burning anyway, 
but I would definitely not recommend, I would not say, hey, you know, go and use module HDR on on the service menu and then play on SDR and get 400 nits full screen brightness. One before, you know, one reason is that that doesn't look I mean, why would you want 400 nits full screen brightness on SDR? I, I don't think that's going to be beneficial. You're go you're washing out the colors by doing that because you're pushing too much brightness. And it's just it's not something I recommend. I don't I don't like how that looks. Now, for HDR, I I would like the TV to be able to push 400 nits full screen, even 800 nits full screen or 1000 <laughs> if if we could. But not for SDR. Not for SDR because you need that HDR, you know, that wider color gamut. You need HDR to push that brightness. But to use all Emotion Pro High is the best option. And the, ex and the explanation is very simple. We are losing brightness. How much brightness? On this LG C1, for example, because it is 38% window size, we are losing 62% brightness. So to that 400 nit full screen, reduce 62%. So that's going to be reduced in 62%, basically. So that's a huge reduction in brightness, but still going to be a pretty good. So also, why SDR makes more sense for black from insertion than, than HDR? Because HDR is an absolute. Okay. So by the way, what I, was, what I was explaining at the brightness loss, I'm going to have a link in the description of this video explaining the tailbot plateaus law. And that explains you that brightness loss. It's basically the average brightness in time. That's the result brightness that you're going to perceive. So because most of the screen is black, that's why you get that brightness loss. So the reason why HDR is not the best option for black from insertion is because it would need to be calibrated in that way, and it is not. So HDR is calibrated just for sample and hold, and HDR is an absolute. It's supposed to be this bright. So if you use black from insertion and you lose brightness, then you cannot, you cannot raise everything. So it would need to be calibrated for black from insertion and it is not. So then you can use dynamic tone mapping and raise the EOTF tracking and then use black from insertion, but you never know if that is, <laughs> that actually doesn't look bad at all. And I would recommend the native HDR, dynamic tone mapping. You can use all Motion pro, it works. And it might be sometimes it might have a fantastic result. But SDR makes more sense because the, the range of SDR is it's a lot smaller. So you can raise the entire thing. This is like music. Imagine you have an instrument on a song. You have an instrument that is very, very loud. That instrument, because it's so loud, it's not allowing to raise the volume of the entire song. So if you, call, if you compress the sound of that instrument so it is not that loud, now because everything is, is more compressed, now you can raise the overall sound of the of the song and that's why they do uh, on recording studios because they want when they master the music because they want the music to be very loud so for black from insertion we need that SDR to be super bright so then we can it's gonna be reduced by using black from insertion so you're back to normal SDR brightness not that 200 nits plus is normal SDR brightness but yeah, that's you get the point. So I'm gonna have a link in the description of these videos to the settings I recommended for SDR, the settings that I recommended for HDR. And I would like to get both, to be honest. I would love to have HDR and have great motion clarity and we will get there. But to get there, we need brute force sample on hold display. So we need a sample on hold display that is one thousand hertz and we need to play the games at 1000 fps <laughs> so how are we going to do that very simple asynchronous reprojection and ai to fix some of the artifacts and some of the occlusion 
problems or disocclusion problems that we might have with asynchronous reprojection. I'm going to have a link in the description of this video to a video where I, exp I talk about asynchronous reprojection and I actually show a demo that you can download today and you will see that you can get the maximum refresh rate of your display max out at any FPS. So even if you can get 30 FPS, that demo is going to give you 240 or 500 Hertz if you get the, the, the latest monitor that's going to be released from Asus, I think it is, like 500 Hertz. You can get 500 FPS out of 30 with perfect input lag. <laughs> Some disocclusion artifacts, but if you get 60 or 100 FPS, you go from 60 or 100 to 500, you cannot tell the difference in terms of the occlusion artifacts and the input lag is perfect. That's the future. The future is 2030. I'm going to speculate because the Blurbusters law, when you read the article, it says that the roadmap for 1000 Hertz displays is 2030. We're going to have 1000 Hertz displays by 2030. That's the plan. So I would ex ex speculate that by 2035, we could have already 4K, 1000 Hertz, and we could have that on HDR, and hopefully we can have a technology that can push those 10,000 nits so we can get the full spec. So Sony has an 8K TV that is a prototype, it's a full spec, it's 10,000 nits, but it's not 1000 Hertz. So for me, for gaming, the full spec has to include 1000 Hertz plus so we can get that perfect motion clarity. I might do a separate video about that explaining what is the, the future, what's the end game display technology and what are the biggest limitations that I see, which is basically power. I don't know why these companies are so restricted in power, like, oh, it has to be, you know, this is the limit. Why? NVIDIA is doing GPUs that are, you know, 600 watts. Who cares? <laughs> so, yeah, but that's a topic for another video. So let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions.